Wednesday, September 28th, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the UK government bond market meltdown continues and we're seeing uh, bond yields go through the roof. It's a very serious situation. Even the IMF now has come out and uh, given its opinion on the UK uh, economic plan, even Janet Yellen has talked about it. And that's what we're going to look at today because I think it's going to spill over everywhere. I have a feeling uh, if there's going to be a global uh, sovereign debt crisis, this is it. We're starting now, and I don't see, I don't see uh, anything stopping it. Before I start, though, I like to say uh, a little bit about bail-ins. What are bail-ins? Well, back in 2008, when the banking system uh, collapsed, basically, and had to be bailed out by us, the taxpayer. And I have to say, what's going on today uh, goes back to that period because uh, the banks uh, uh, on Wall Street, City of London, Europe, Iceland, they all acted irresponsibly. And with the exception of uh, the Icelandic uh, banks, they were all basically bailed out and allowed to operate as if nothing had happened. There is no banking reforms. No uh, high-placed uh, executives were put in jail. Uh, none of their uh, wealth was taken away from them. If anything, uh, the reaction to the 08 crisis uh, <laughs> encouraged even more risk-taking, and, and nothing has been fixed. And, and I think uh, this is payback time. But this time around... Uh, the banking system will not be bailed out, but they will use what's called the bail-in uh, mechanism, uh, which uh, has been used before. <laughs> and, and you might ask, what do you mean? Well, it was used in uh, Cyprus back in 2013. And the bail-in is basically when the failing uh, financial institutions or banks, they take the deposits <laughs> of their the clients, they take your deposits to save themselves and they give you in return uh, stock in the bank or maybe even nothing and you get uh, left holding the bag. And, and I think that there's a big possibility that this could happen in the UK. And why is that? Well, because banking institutions, uh, especially in the UK, a, a lot of their assets are government bonds and also mortgages. And as uh, yields uh, on government bonds spike through the roof, how, like we're seeing now, just have a look at this chart of the 30-year uh, gilt uh, government bond yield. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's looking very much like the European sovereign debt crisis of 2011, 2012. Uh, this spike is not normal. As a, a lot of you know, I, I worked in the bond markets from around late late 80s to 2012 government bond markets and i can tell you this is just uh this is crisis like so you can see the the 30 year uh, gilt yield has gone from uh around uh almost a half a percent a couple of years ago now we're at uh, like almost five percent and we're going to give you uh, an update of course of where it is this morning it's probably gone up even more so how does a bail-in work? Well, let's see what happened in uh, Cyprus. It says here on Wikipedia about the 2012-2013 uh, uh, Greek Cypriot financial crisis. It's, uh, and uh, Cyprus, of course, is part of the European uh, Union. It says no insured deposit of 100,000 or less would be affected. Though 47.5 of all bank deposits above 100,000 were seized. So in the UK, uh, the insured uh, amount is 85,000 uh, pounds. So what I'm trying to say here, I, I think is 
uh, there's a high probability if things don't improve and they keep getting worse that you, you risk uh, losing uh, your money uh, if you have more than 85,000 uh, in the bank. You know, what's the way to protect yourself? In my opinion, this is not advice. Well, um, there's a few ways. One is to go to the bank and uh, take out the cash. But uh, as things get worse, I think it's going to be harder. They're going to make it harder and harder for people to do that. Uh, I think the best way to do it is to buy um, physical gold, gold, uh, maybe some silver as well, even though you might not want to pay the uh, the VAT on silver. Uh, it hasn't been a problem for me, but uh, yes. And for the UK, uh, the best gold to buy because it's uh, legal tender and uh, devoid or exempt from capital gains tax are gold sovereigns and gold one ounce gold Britannias. And uh, yes, I have an affiliation uh, with gold investments. Uh, you will get a small discount if you use my promo code Maneco64. And I think uh, some of the other bigger bullion dealers in the UK, they, they are having problems source uh, Britannia's. Up until yesterday, gold investments had Britannia's. This might change, uh, but uh, shop around. And the other option as well is Glint. Of course, that's a little different. Uh, your gold is held on your be behalf in a vault in Switzerland, and you have access to it through uh, a MasterCard uh, debit, uh, debit card or prepaid MasterCard. And there's the Glint app as well. So I honestly, personally would favor the first option, which is physical uh, uh, gold through Sovereigns and uh, Britannia's. That's what I would do. And the worst that can happen, of course, is everything implodes. The banking system implodes. And uh, you've got your money, i.e. your gold. And if uh, somehow they're able to, like, solve this crisis, which I think is highly unlikely, uh, then you still have your gold and it's still worth, gold is always worth something. So uh, I think... Uh, it's a very serious situation, and uh, I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't think it was, but it's up to you, of course, <laughs> to decide. So now to the uh, IMF and to the uh, situation in the UK uh, government bond market. A as I said earlier, yields are spiking heavily and you saw that 30-year uh, guilt yield spiking the other thing that will do is that that's gonna spill over into mortgage rates <laughs> because mortgage lenders uh, uh, their rates are set off uh, government bond uh, uh, yields uh, and, and also what people call swap swap rates, uh, which are derivative, which are derived from government bond yields. So swap rates are going through the roof. Uh, the two-year swap rate is what uh, a lot of times is used to fix mortgages. And we know that in 2021, there are a lot of people taking on uh, very cheap mortgages. But uh, the uh, the problem with these mortgages is that they were two-year fixed uh, rates. And now with yields going up, when they remortgage uh, next year in the next six to nine months or 12 months, uh, the, their costs are going to go through the roof. Uh, just just look at that 30 year yield. It's going to go up three, four, five times and yields could go could go e even higher. And, and again, the banks, uh, their their assets, uh, they've invested a, a lot of their assets in these uh, instruments, uh, government bonds. And and also don't forget government bond yields going up means people are selling these government bonds so the bank's balance sheets are getting uh, more and more precarious so before we look at the uh, article about the imf in the ft that came out this morning let's just quickly go through the uh, uk uh, government bond market so right now uh, we've got the two-year yield at 472 
Um, my system says it's down about four basis points, but if you look at the three year, that's up 11 of 479. The 10 year is up another uh, 11 at 461. And the 30 year now is broken through 5%. So that, that chart I showed you was from yesterday. It was at 498. Right now it's up 13 basis points. So there's no let up uh, in the situation. So we'll go to the uh, article here, IMF. And it says IMF urges UK to reevaluate tax cuts in a biting attack on fiscal plan. Multilateral lender warns on targeted package risks stoking inflation. So the IMF isn't telling the UK to do anything yet. <laughs> it's kind of saying maybe in your budget in November you could uh, reverse things. So I think November, uh, waiting till November is a very long time. And we had another uh, Bank of England official, the uh, head economist yesterday saying, oh, we're going to do everything to uh, stop this. We're going to be tough, but only in November. And the market is not buying that right now. But the most interesting uh, comments uh, in this article were from Janet Yellen, uh, who's been right a, a, about a lot of things, right? I think she was the one who said that uh, uh, doing uh, QT back when she was a chairman or chairwoman of the Fed was going to be like watching paint dry. She was the one who said uh, that we'd never have another financial crisis in her lifetime. <laughs> and that was before 2020. So she said... Uh, she added the financial turmoil of recent days appeared to be confined to Britain. And I don't agree with her, but let's continue. Rather than spreading to the global economy and, and that financial markets had sold off sharply but were functioning well. Well, <laughs> I don't think uh, Ms. Yellen is watching the other bond markets aside from the UK. She's not seeing that even Italian yields now and even German and, and French yields are going up as well. Not as much as the UK yields, but they're going up significantly. For example, uh, the Italian BTP now is almost at 5%. It's at 484. I think uh, this summer, at one point, it went back down to three. Um, and that's despite the fact that uh, Christine Lagarde, the president of the ECB, has said that... Uh, they're not going to do QT for now, <laughs> uh, which means basically they'll never do QT or unwind their balance sheet. Um, even the United States uh, Treasury or bond market, uh, that's also spiking higher. Uh, we're seeing now the 10 year at 4%. It's up another five basis points. So I, I, I think Janet Yellen, uh, again, is going to be proven wrong. And unfortunately, you might say to yourself, if you're watching me for the first time, yes, you're warning about this. Where were you? Uh, did you warn before? Well, I have. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't feel good that this is all happening, but I didn't have, have a crystal ball. It's just looking at how governments are acting, central banks are acting, you know how it's going to end end up. It's all about maths, right? Uh, financial markets. And uh, uh, it all started in 08 for me and even before then with all the deficit spending. And uh, it's never been stopped. And uh, if you know about bond markets and financial markets, uh, you know that and the economy, you know that there comes a point when it's not sustainable anymore. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I recommend you go to my uh, channel on YouTube and look at the playlist. I have a UK economic collapse uh, playlist, 2021-2022. Uh, I started warning about this back in July last year. Um, the first video here is uh, the UK uh, economy is on the brink of collapse, part one. That was July last year. So this is it, guys. And uh, hopefully you have uh, protected yourself. Uh, and uh, as I've, I've said in the past, get out, get out of debt, stack a, a little bit of gold and silver on the side. That will go a long way to protecting you. 
And uh, yes, with that, let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 8.30 a.m. London time. And uh, yes, we've got spot gold is down uh, $10. $10. Yes, at 16.18. Am I concerned about this? No, because gold uh, in pounds and in other currencies that are coming off because of the Federal Reserve uh, policy of trying to uh, bring down inflation by raising rates rapidly. Uh, they made a mistake not raising rates last year, and they're making a mistake being too aggressive now. They're going to bring the whole system down. And that starts at the periphery, because all these fiat currencies are a derivative of the dollar. And if you want to find out more about why they're a derivative, check out my playlist uh, about the Bretton Woods system. But anyway, I'm not concerned about gold going down. I'm more concerned. I'd be more concerned if I had too much uh, of my money in the banks in the UK. So there you go. Um, the high has been 1634. The low has been 1615 uh, for gold. Silver is down 35 cents at 1802. Uh, low has been 1795 and the high 1846. So the stock market is not reacting well. So I, I think uh, Janet Yellen is completely wrong. The Dow is breaking 29,000 now. It's down 200 points. The futures is down three quarters of a percent. The NASDAQ 100 futures is down over 1%. And the S&P is down three quarters of a percent at 36.17. Uh, the FTSE is down 150 points or 2% at 68.44. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, FTSE hit 7,000 back in uh, the year 2000. So hasn't been a good store of value, uh, the FTSE. Eurostox 50 is down 56 or 1.7%. Uh, to the currencies, uh, sterling actually is holding up relatively well, I would say. It's down only two-thirds of a percent at 106.60. And the euro is down half a percent at 95.50. Uh, the dollar is down 0.1 versus the yen at 144.64. Uh, the dollar is up a third versus the Swiss franc at 99.40. And the dollars continue to rise against the uh, U1. It's up almost 1% at 724. Uh, let's check the... Uh, Russian ruble, uh, the dollar is up uh, just under percent at 58.80 versus the ruble. Uh, and let's quickly uh, go to the commodities now, uh, see where they are, the general commodities. Uh, crude is down 2%, WTI 76.58. Uh, Brent is down 2% at 83.20. And high-grade copper is down 3 quarters of a percent at 3.25. Uh, U.S. NAC gas is up 1.4 percent at uh, 685. Let's check the uh, Dutch NAC gas futures, the TTF. Well, that's up 12 percent, uh, back above 200 at around 210. So with that, uh, let's just quickly go over what happened yesterday to the Nord Stream uh, 2 uh, pipeline. Uh, some of you uh, asked me in the comment section what I thought about it. I didn't answer back. Uh, but uh, what I will say is uh, <laughs> I'll leave you with this uh, tweet from Wall Street Silver and my friend Jim, Jim Lewis there. And uh, you can make up your mind what I think. And uh, you might want to go on Twitter if you're on Twitter and uh, vote uh, in this poll. Uh, what happened to Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. So the, uh, that's the uh, right now 57,000 uh, votes, as you can see. And you can see the results. That, that's what I think. And I would say, why would Russia want to blow up the pipeline if it can just turn off the gas, right? So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. And think about subscribing uh, to my channel if you haven't yet. And with that, I wish you all a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.